Hello future accountants and welcome to my channel for another accounting lesson. Today I'm doing a lesson on prepaid expense and we'll be doing examples of the different types of transactions that you can see in tests regarding prepaid expense. Please, if you like these videos and you want more lessons, please like and subscribe my channel to give me an opportunity to create more content for you. So if this is our current financial year, prepaid expense means we've paid more than this financial year. We've paid for a bit of next financial year. So this is expenses paid for the next financial year, the next accounting period. This will include all type of expenses. It could be rent expense, insurance, stationery, water, electricity, salaries, telephone, any type of expenses can be seen with transactions such as prepaid expense, interests, any type of thing. So I'm going to use a few examples as well to show and explain this to you. Before we get to that, prepaid expense, only expenses for this current financial year must be taken into account. The amount paid for next financial year is posted to the prepaid expense account and is classified as an asset for the business. Therefore, prepaid expense is an asset to the business. And the GOP principle is the matching or the accrual principle. The matching or the accrual principle states that expenses and income should be recorded in the correct financial period in which they occur. This will only, this will include the expenses or the income that has not been received. This means income and expenses recorded when they are incurred and not when they are received or paid. So to break this down into simple terms, the idea is that you want to calculate 12 months of profits. The matching principle means that we need to use 12 months of income minus 12 months of expenses to get 12 months of profits. So this is what our accrual or the matching principle means. So let's have a look at four examples of different types of transactions that you will see in your tests. Example one, this is an extract from the pre-adjustment trial balance for February 28, 2024. It gives us a rent expense balance of 62,400. This means this is the physical amount I have received for rent expense or that I've paid for rent expense for this period. But now it says that rent for March has already been paid. So if this is my financial year, it means I've already paid for March. That's next year. So I've already paid there for next year. So we've paid for 13 months. So I'll use that 62,400 divide by 13 months. And it is 4,800 per month that I pay for rent. And we have one month that's paid in advance. So when I record this, rent expense is an expense, expense or as debit, prepaid expense is an asset. So rent expense is an expense, my balance on the debit side. 2024, February 28, because it's a year end adjustment, my date is the end of the year, total brought forward 62,400. Now included in this Total, we have one month of rent included. That means I need to take it out because we only want 12 months should be in the balance. There is now 13 months. So I'm going to take out that one month of rent expense. So February 28, we take it to prepaid expense, general journal, 
4,800. And every debit has a credit. So this entry is on the credit side. I'll post the entry on the debit side of prepaid expense. February 28, rent expense, general journal, 4,800. You, you have to remember that all nominal accounts are closed off to the profit and loss account. So you'll put your totals at the bottom. On the credit side, I'll say, but that is not equal to 62,400. So I take my total minus 4,800. And that 57,600, that is 12 months. Uh, uh, 12 months, sorry, 12 months of rent. And that's what we want in our financial statements, the expense of 12 months, profit and loss general journal. In my GJ, my general journal, we'll have our journal voucher, our day, our debit prepaid expense with 4,800. We credit rent expense 4,800. Your story, your narration tells us what happened. Rent paid in advance for one month. Very easy. Second example, example number two. Extract from the pre-adjustment trial balance for 28 February 2024. We have an insurance of 2,200. This is something you will see very common. It says included in the amount for insurance, the annual premium of 600 on a policy that matures 31 July. Now, do you see the amounts are different? This means we have many different insurance policies. And one of these policies is a 12-month policy that expires 31 July 2024. That's next financial year. So when you see dates, don't freak out. You need a timeline. So this is my current financial year. It ends 28 February 2024. How do I know? Look at your pre-adjustment trial balance. It gives you that balance on top. This tells you when your year ends. Then you just think, what's the day after 28 February? It's 1 March. So my year starts 1 March. Then I put in my daughter. We have a policy that ends the 31st of July. And it's an annual premium, so it was 12 months long. It started 1 August. You can see some of this insurance policy is in my financial year. That's great. We want it there. But this part that's not in the financial year, we need to take out. So the 600 is for the full 12 months. Seven months is in the timeline. It's in my financial year. But that five months has to be taken out. So I'm going to take that 600. I'm going to divide it by 12 months. So for this insurance policy, we pay 50 rand per month. How many months is too much? Five months is too much. So 50 rand times five months is 250 rand that we paid for next year. So in my general ledger, insurance is an expense, prepaid expense is an asset. First, I put in my total for insurance, it's expense, expense always debit. So on the debit side, February 28th, Total brought forward 2,200. Now included in that total is the 254 next financial year. Because it's for next year, I need to take it out of the total. I put it on the other side. So, and I'll take it to prepaid expense. And every debit has a credit. On the debit side, February 28th, prepaid expense. General Journal 250. And remember to close off your nominal accounts to profit and loss. I put my total. And then I say on the credit side, but this is not equal to 2,200. You take that total minus the 250 minus everything on top. And our balance, 1,950 will go to your profit and loss accounts. In my general journal, Journal voucher number, the day, it's the end of the financial year. We're doing year-end adjustments. I debit prepaid expense with 250. I credit insurance with 250. My narration insurance paid in advance. Now we're going to go a bit more difficult. 
So here, example number three. Now I'm making it very difficult. Let's see how easy we can break this up to if we just break up the information. So I'm giving you salaries, no balance for salaries. You have no opening total. Then I say the business has three employees. Two of them receive their salaries of 213600 each for their entire financial year. So let's go slowly. The business has three employees. Two of them receive 213600 each for the entire financial year. The third employee appointed on the 1st of June earns 10% less than the other employees. He has received his fees for March, so he's received one month in advance. All right, so let's read again. This is my financial year. I see dates, I don't freak out, I show a timeline. My year ends 28 February, it starts the 1st of March. Then, I say employee 1 earns 213,600, employee 2 earns 213,600 for the year. 213,600 divided by 12 months is 17,800 per month that each employee earns. The third employee was appointed on 1 June 2023. Therefore, he worked for nine months this financial year and we paid him for March as well. We paid him one month in advance. He earns 10% less than the other employees. So I took that 17,800 and I times it by 90%. So it's 10% less than the other employees. Employee 3 is earning 16,020 per month for employee 3. How many months did he work for us? Well, do we pay him in total? We paid him 10 months in total, the 9 months for this year and the 1 month extra. So we've paid him a total of 160,200. So to get this balance, the salaries balance, I'm going to take employees 1 plus employee 2's 213,600 plus the total of what we paid employee 3, the 160,200. Therefore, my total for the salaries, the balance, the opening total is 587,400. But then remember, there's one month, employee 3 received one month in advance, which was 16,020. So let's have a look at my general ledger. Salaries is an expense, rent expense is an asset. Let's put in that opening total that we calculated for salaries. February 28th, total brought forward 587,400 on the debit side. Expenses are debit, expenses always debit. Then in that total, we have that one month, it's too much, we need to take it out on the credit side of salaries. February 28th, prepaid expense, general journal, 16,020. And then I can say every debit has a credit. On the debit side of prepaid expense, February 28th, rent expense, general journal, 16,020. And remember to close off all your nominal accounts to the profit and loss accounts. I show my totals. On the credit side, I take this total minus Everything on top, the 16,020, and I get a total of 571,380, which I close off to the profit and loss account. In my general journal, we have journal voucher one, day 28, I debit prepaid expense of 16,020, I credit salaries with 16,020, my narration, salaries paid in advance. Our last example, one that you also commonly see in your test papers. Example number four. The extract from the pre-adjustment trial balance shows a rent expense balance of 70,500. So that's what I have paid for rent. A building was rent since one April. The rent increased by 500 per month from 1 June. 
The rent for March and April has been paid. Now, dates. I see a lot of dates, a lot of information. Don't freak out. Let's do a timeline. So my financial year ends 28 February 2024. Therefore, it starts 1 March 2023. A building has been rent since 1 April. So at 1 April, I'm going to show a marker. I started renting the building from there. The rent increased by 500 from 1 June. So at 1 June, I show 1 June plus 500. The rent for March and April has been paid. So two months in advance. So that means from there to there, from April until June, two months, the rent was X. We do not know what the rent was, we just know it's X. Then from June up to the two months in advance, those 11 months, the rent was X plus 500. So for two months, the rent is two for two months, it's two X plus for 11 months, it's X plus 500 equals 70,500. Two X plus 11 X plus 11 times 500 is 5,500 equals 70,500. Two X plus 11 X is 13 X plus 5,500 equals 70,500. We take this 5,500 over to the other side by minusing it. Therefore, 13x equals 65,000. Therefore, I divide by 13, x is 5,000. Now, remember, x is before the increase. We want x plus 500. So when I say 5,000 plus 500, it's 5,500 per month after the increase. There was two months in advance. So 5,500 times two months is 11,000. So 11,000 was prepaid. In my general ledger, rent expense is an expense, prepaid expense is an asset. I put in my total expense, always debit, balance total on the debit side. February 28, total brought forward 70,500. Then in that total, we have for next financial year. So I take it out, put it on the other side. February 28, prepaid expense, general journal, 11,000. And every debit has a credit. February 28, rent expense, general journal, 11,000. And remember to close off your nominal accounts to your profit and loss account. Show my total, 70,500. Minus 11,000, and I close off to the profit and loss account. My GJ, Journal Voucher 1, day 28, I debit prepaid expense with 11,000. Credit rent expense with 11,000. My narration, rent paid in advance for two months. Guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a comment if you have questions or specific topics that you request lessons for. I hope you had a lot of fun, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye, everybody.